and goes all over the world. And so, uh, we, Tommy, we were so impressed, and we really enjoyed having you in in Phoenix back uh, in January. And I know you were really impressed, Mario, and we're hoping to see you in July if we can, if they'll let us out of our houses. So uh, we want to turn it over to you. I know you have a good word for us. So you take it away, brother. All right. Thank you so much, Tim. Greetings to everyone tonight in the name of Jesus. It's such an honor. It's an honor to come and speak. Anytime I can go anywhere, but right now I don't have to go anywhere. I can speak the name of Jesus from right here in my office in the little town of Dora, Alabama, near Jasper, Alabama. It's about 25 miles west of Birmingham in the great state of Alabama. So uh, it's an honor to be with you. Honor to be with you. I enjoyed so much being with all of you in Phoenix. I met many of you in Phoenix and uh, it's great to see your face again here on the TV screen or the phone or the computer or laptop, whatever you're on tonight. Isn't it some in Zoom something? Yeah. I tell you what, Tim Tim's gonna get me some stock in Zoom. I'm telling you he's he's gonna pull that off for me. We're gonna <laughs> yeah. we because it's already it's it might be a pretty good product to have right there. Uh, so it's an honor honor to be here. I thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know when I was ten I I was uh I love to go to church with my grandmother. My my um, my family, my mother, my dad was not saved at that time, but my mother would take my brother and sister, and we would, we would go to a little small Baptist church in a little community of Dora, Alabama. They run about 50 people, maybe every Sunday, but it was, it was a good. But I enjoyed staying my time at Grandma's house. I loved to go spend the night with her and be with her at, at my grandmother's house. And on Sunday, Grandmother would take us to the Pentecostal church, and it was something different for me to go to the Pentecostal church. You know, I'd never given my life to Jesus, never been saved. So on a Sunday morning there in that little Pentecostal church in Dora, Alabama, about halfway through the sermon, my heart got to going 900 miles an hour. <laughs> I felt the very presence of God for the first time in my life. As, as God began to pull on me. Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't know what to do. I, I'd, never, I'd never had that situation before. So I, I'm, I'm thinking as a 10-year-old boy, you know what I need to do? I need to go home. I need to pray. I need to get my life in order a little bit. And then I can come back to church next Sunday and walk to the altar and give my life to Jesus. I, what, what I was thinking in my mind was I had to go get cleaned up a little bit in order to get saved. I, I had to go and pray and, and seek God a little bit before I could get saved. Well, in that time of, of my life, you know, they had choirs. Most churches had large, and some churches still have mass choirs, but we had choirs. And Tim, you remember the day when they used to play the piano and say, all right, everybody come to the choir now, and people would get out of their seats and go to the choir. Well, now the praise and worship teams are doing a tremendous job doing that. Well, the choir was singing that morning, and they were singing a song, Just As I Am. Y'all remember that song? Mm -hmm. Just as I am, mm -hmm. waiting not to rid my soul of one dark spot. To thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. When they started singing that song, I didn't have to go home and get myself cleaned up. I walked right down to that altar and knelt in that altar and gave my life to Jesus Christ as a 10-year-old boy. Pray with my great uncle, my, my mother's uncle, sat beside me, and he said, pray this prayer with me, and I'll never forget it like yesterday, and gave my life to Jesus Christ that morning. Just as I am, I came to Jesus Christ. Well, I want to know about that song. I wanted to know about it, so later I got to study that song. That song was written by Charlotte Elliott. We don't know a lot about Charlotte Elliott, but Charlotte Elliott wrote the song, Just As I Am. Her brother was a missionary and traveled the world preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, and Charlotte, younger than her brother, wanted to also go on the mission field, but Charlotte could not travel. Charlotte was an invalid. She was chair-bound or bed-bound all of her life. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Listen to this. Her brother had many 
people saved on the mission field. Many people saved. Charlotte has had millions saved from one song, Just As I Am. Wow. That song changed lives all, and still today, if you get in a great service with God and hear that song, I'll never forget it. That when the choir was singing that song, Just As I Am, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, and I came to know Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Many months later, about five months later, I'm a sick young man, go to the hospital in Birmingham, Alabama, and was told by the doctors who told my parents, your son has about five days to live. He's got yellow jaundice, which we call hepatitis C today. Mm. He's got yellow jaundice. His liver is infected, and he should have been here two or three months ago. But Tommy has about five days to live, mm. maybe six, maybe eight, but uh, that's it. Prepare yourselves because your son's going to die. Well, they didn't know my grandmother, and they didn't know my mother. And I'm going to tell you what they did. They knew how to plead the blood. <laughs> they knew how to go to God and plead the blood of Jesus. And that's what they did. On Sunday morning, many of you remember one of the first TV ministries that came on in the 50s was Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts came on with called the Healing Hour. Yeah. And listen, we didn't have 184 TV stations on our charter cable. <laughs> we had three stations, NBC, ABC, and CBS is all we had in Birmingham. And Oral Roberts came on one of those stations every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Now, the little TV in the hospital room was not up on the top of the roof line like it is today. You've got to have a remote to turn it on and off. It was just sitting on a little table right beside the bed, little black and white TV with Oral Roberts on it. He started preaching. You know how he would do his hand like this, Tim? You know how yeah. Oral Roberts would put his hand like this? And you know what he would say? Touch the TV. <laughs> if you can't touch the TV, point your hand toward the TV. It, it, just point at it if you can. Just do that. Well, my mother is praying with me. And my grandmother is praying for me. And they're pleading the blood. They're pleading the blood of Jesus mm. right there in that hospital room. Old Robert said, put your hand toward the TV. Mother, touched the TV put her other hand on my stomach and said, God, heal my boy. I'll give him to you. Heal my boy and I'll give him to you. If you don't know where that prayer is, you need to read 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1, Hannah said, God, if you will give me a man child, if you'll give me a boy, I'll give him back to the church. And Samuel, our, one of our greatest prophets, was born out of that prayer. Instantly, not in a minute, not after a while, not next week, and not eight days. Instantly, the power of God came into my hospital room. I call it Shekinah glory. I call it a blue mist, the very presence of God. Jesus walked right up to my bed, right up to the bottom of my bed. Now, when my mother and my grandmother got in that kind of presence, they both fell out, fell out on the power of God. They didn't get to see Jesus because they were out on the power of God. And he walked up my bed, and I got a brand new liver. In one second. Wow. Totally healed by the power of God. That, that's where this started, whatever this is. It's God's ministry, not mine. Whatever this is, that's where this started by the healing power of God. When I see the blood, that's my lesson tonight. When I see the blood, when I hear you pleading the blood, when's the last time we walked through our houses pleading the blood? I'm going to tell you what I did. When the virus started, I took oil and I went around my house. Many of you have done it. I know you have. I anointed the doors of my house. Yes. I anointed the windows. I anointed every entrance to my house that could get in. I went around my house. I took oil and put it on the bottom of my shoes. So when I walked the perimeter of my house, the blood, the oil is sinking right into that ground all the way around my house. No virus can come into my house. I, I, I rebuke it. I come against it in the name of Jesus. And I walked around my house pleading the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Listen to Exodus 12, 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague. Somebody say virus. Uh -huh. The plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. It can't come against us. God made a covenant with his people through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're going to talk about, the blood covenant. It's a covenant. 
a binding agreement made between two parties, a relationship that is sealed by the use of the blood. I remember, and you do too, most of you watching, the old Western movies that would come on television. The Indians and the white men in their out west battles. But when they got to be friends, here's what they would do. They would cut their hand or cut their wrist, and then they would put them together like this and say, we are now blood brothers. Right. That was a covenant. They would seal the covenant agreement by mixing their blood together. In the early days of England and France, they would sign an agreement. Then they would cut their finger and seal it with the blood. The covenants were sealed with the blood. Blood covenants have been around about as long as man has been around. In fact, when God created Adam and Eve, he initiated the first blood covenant in Genesis 3.21. Unto Adam also he made his wife. Did the Lord make them coats? The Lord made them coats of skins and put clothing on them. So God killed the first animals to make the covenant with Adam to clothe Adam. So God did the first covenant with blood. When he saw their sin, he covered them with the blood covenant. Right. The blood was shed to cover the sin of Adam and Eve. Blood was shed to cover the sin of mankind. Only man could convince his fellowship with God. Genesis 4, 23, Cain and Abel. Cain bought a bloodless offering. He was a tiller of the soil. So in my opinion, I, he brought what he grew in his garden, if you will. Cain, being a tiller of the soil, was a gardener. So he brought the offering. That was fine, but that's not God's requirement. God required a blood sacrifice. You had to have a blood sacrifice. That was the requirement. He grew up with Adam. He grew up with Eve and Abel, other children maybe they had. And then he knew the covenant. God requires blood covenant. He did not bring a blood covenant. He had to bring the sacrifice of blood. Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. The same is true today for you and me. When you and I enter a covenant relationship with God, it has to be by faith. What is faith anyway? Faith in Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God. You know, when they built a temple, Solomon built a temple. David couldn't build the temple because David was a man of war. But David got all the money together, if you will, and so Solomon did the temple. When the high priest got ready to do the sacrifices, where did they go to get the lambs? Bethlehem. Bethlehem is about a six-mile walk, if you will, a six-mile six trip from downtown Jerusalem to Bethlehem. Bethlehem was where the shepherds raised the sheep. So it was logical. You go to Bethlehem to get the lambs. That's where the sacrifice came from. And that's where our Lord and Savior, the Lamb of God, was born in Bethlehem. After Abel, other people in the blood covenant. After the flood, Noah built an altar and offered God a blood sacrifice. Now tell me about quarantine. Noah was quarantined with his family. Yeah. <laughs> Noah was quarantined. You know, if you went behind the, the blood covenant at the day of Exodus, they were quarantined in their house and the, and the, they didn't come back. Abraham, God made a covenant with Abraham, the shedding of blood, the blood covenant. In Exodus 12, then we have the Passover in Exodus 12. The blood of the lamb was put on the doorposts. Now, Pharaoh had a mighty army. Pharaoh had chariots of war. Pharaoh had the greatest army machine in the world at that time. Egypt was the most powerful country in the world at that time, the most powerful nation. The children of Israel had been in slavery 430 years, and God heard the cries of the people, and he said, Moses, it's time to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Moses said, what am I going to fight Pharaoh with? You know what he told him? He said, get a lamb. Get a lamb? Why would I get a lamb? Why would I want to fight Pharaoh with a lamb? He's got a, he's got a war machine, and you're asking me to get a lamb? He said, that's right. You just get a lamb. You put the lamb in your house, and you take care of it. 
And then at the end, when the Exodus came, I want you to put the lamb's blood on your doorpost. I want you to put it on the side post, the right and left, and I want you to put it on, on the top doorpost, but not on the bottom, because you don't trample in the blood. You don't walk in the blood. So they did, do, they did what God said. The death angel came by. They escaped death. You know what the death angel did not ask or did not know? Who was in the house? Now get this one. He didn't know who was in the house. He didn't care who was in the house. He wanted to see the blood on the doorpost. And he went to the next house. Get your family in the house. Plead the blood of Jesus on the family in the house. And the plague cannot come against them. We can escape sin. We can escape destruction. We can escape death by the blood offerings. The blood offerings. Just a substitute. It's not a substitute or temporary. An animal had to die. And these were animals were types and shadows of the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood did not cover. The blood cleansed. It cleansed, not covered, but we're totally clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let me show you another. <clears throat> Genesis 22 and 2. Abraham and Isaac. You know this story. You heard in Sunday school. You've heard this story all your life. Abraham took Isaac. They went to the mountain where God showed them. Isaac was maybe not a teenager. He might have been a grown man. He might have been 30 years old. He, he might have been 18. We don't get that age on Isaac at this time. But he was old enough to carry the wood on his back up the hill for his daddy. He was old enough. Daddy, we got the wood. Daddy, I see you got the fire. But where is the sacrifice? Where is the sacrifice? You know, Abraham did not tell Sarah where he was going. Sarah, being the woman of the household, might have not let Isaac take that baby son of hers to the mountaintop. But she, he went because that's what God required. Abraham answered and said, God will provide the sacrifice. God will provide. He's still doing it for us today. A beautiful picture here. Now listen, father had to take the son. I hope you're getting that in the spirit just tonight. Father God sent his son. Father Abraham took his son to the mountain. Abraham was willing. This is the best illustration of, father, of referring to God, the father, willing to sacrifice Jesus, his only begotten son. That's why the son of man came to this earth, to do his assignment. Even the disciples, especially Peter, Lord, we're not going to let them take you. Lord, we're going to defend you. You don't need to go to Jerusalem right now. You, you need to stay away. You need to hide out. We don't need to go because they want to kill you. And he said, just get out of my way. I've got an assignment to do. God, give me this assignment, and I'm going to complete my assignment. Assignment was to go to the cross for you and me. Every year on the Day of Atonement, animals had to die and cover, if you will, the sins of Israel. Year after year, they performed the ceremony with the lambs. And you know what they did? Listen to this one. You'll love this. Each family had to put their name on their sacrifice. The Combs family would take a lamb to the high priest, those who were doing the sacrifice, and I would write the name and tie it around the neck of that lamb, and it would say Combs family. So the priest would know the Combs family brought a sacrifice. The Combs family brought something to be sacrificed here. That was a requirement. Put your name on your sacrifice. Everyone didn't do it, so they did a Paschal lamb for everyone. The lamb that they raised for specifically for those that didn't come so the sins of Israel could be forgiven. Father God put his name on the top of the cross. This is my son. This, he put his name on his sacrifice, just like they did when they brought the lambs. He put his name on his sacrifice for you and for me. His blood was offered one time, just once, and it will last forever and forever and forever. Hebrews 9, 12. In order for sin to be taken away, it didn't take the blood of goats or bulls or lambs or pigeon doves. 
Jesus did it at the cross. For eternity, under the new covenant, he washed and cleansed us from all sin with his blood. The blood of Jesus became the final blood sacrifice. The blood of Jesus is complete atonement for our sins. Jesus was the final sacrifice without spot, without blemish. Couldn't find no fault in him. Couldn't find anything. John the Baptist said it best in John 1, 12. He said, behold, the Lamb of God that comes to take away the sins of the world. John the Baptist, so Jesus was walking toward him. He said, behold, the Lamb of God, which comes to take away the sins of the world. He didn't say the sins of Israel or the sins of everybody gathered here at the garden. In this sight, John the Baptist had a special insight, of course, who Jesus was. He knew this man, Jesus, was the Lamb of God, the final sacrifice for all of us. He knew it. This blood covenant which Jesus established is for every member of the body of Christ. It covers you, covers me. This blood covenant is for us. Every individual that accepts Jesus Christ as a Savior can receive eternal life, the blood covenant. Sometimes a person is sick in an accident. They need this someone to give them some blood. You may have done it. I've done it. A blood transfusion, if you will. We give blood. They need our blood in order to live. These people live because someone gave blood, and they give them blood in order they can have life. From one person's blood, are you hearing me? From one person's blood, they receive life. It's called blood transfusion. Jesus is our blood transfusion. <laughs> Jesus gives his blood, and after you receive the blood of Jesus, you'll never again need another blood transfusion. One time, apply the blood. One time in your life, the blood of Jesus saves us, cleanses us, makes us whole, heals us, and gives us eternal life. Now listen, I want you to get this final point. Jesus is on the cross. He's been beaten, nailed to a tree. Now the teaching on the tree, we'll have to get in deep, we'll have to get in deep in the teaching of the tree. The Romans did the cross that we know as the cross, the wooden beams that we know. The teaching way back is it was a tree itself. Some people even say it was the tree of life that Jesus was nailed to that day. Mm -hmm. But I, that teaching, you'll have to get into yourself. I'm, try, I'm, I'm doing this study on that. I'm doing this on it. You know, even it says he was nailed to a tree. And we take that as lumber that made the cross as a tree. But it could have been a tree that he was done to. A tree for you and me. He was totally wounded. The blood flowed from the cross, from the crown of thorns on his head, from his wrist and his feet. The blood flowed from a cut on his side. The precious blood of Jesus flowed down that old rugged cross and washed away the sins of the world. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that blood lose all their guilty stains. Yes. <laughs> Everything we have right now is because of the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood cleanses, sets us free, protects us. The blood of Jesus sealed the covenant for eternity. Somebody say the blood. Somebody say the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood. Walk through your house tonight pleading the blood. Yes. Walk, walk, plead the blood of your children, grandchildren. Some of you, I look at you, you got great grandchildren. Plead the blood on them. Plead the blood over your grandchildren. Mm -hmm. and plead the blood. Call it in their lives. No plague can come against them. No virus come against them. Nothing, no disease. Thank God for the blood. Learn to pray and plead the blood. We've got to get back to that point. I think this, this, this virus that we're facing right now is bringing people back to God every day. Every day I hear people coming back to God. More and more people, Tommy, how can I be saved? Tommy, teach me about this Jesus. I've been away from God for 20 years. I want to come back to God now. That's happening every day. Every day, the blood of Jesus. It built a hedge of protection around you and your family. It will build a hedge of protection around your home. Job had a hedge around him. Do you know the devil has to ask permission 
to come against me. Yeah. He has to ask God's permission to come against me. Yeah. Tommy's, a, Tommy's one of mine, and you can't touch him. That's well, right. if you let me touch him, I promise he'll curse you and die. All right, I'm going to let you put a little bit on him, but you ain't going to touch him. I'm telling you, you're not going to kill him. That's what Job had. Job had that protection around him. Do you realize that the prayers of the blood to your family, your job, your finances, somebody's watching. Take your checkbook and lay it on the table where you're sitting right now and plead the blood. In this last day we're living in, God is going to send finances to you and me. I'm talking to everyone watching. God is going to send finances like you've never seen before because we've got a great work to do. And the great work we need to do is going to need finances. And it's coming. Get ready for it. I'm telling you, it's coming. Faith in Jesus Christ. Obey the word of God. God is applies. We apply. The word does the work. In this story in Exodus chapter 12, the Passover, the ordinance for you and me, forever means forever. It's an ordinance. How often should I pray to God to come in with the blood? Every day. Every day. Every day. Plead, plead the blood. Cover me and my family every day. Satan, you hear me real good now. You can't touch me. There was a song years ago, Can't Touch This. I, I don't remember who that was, but it was a good one. Was, can't Touch This. I just turned it into this. Can't touch me, devil. You might as well leave me alone going down the road, get somebody else, because you ain't going to touch this because of the blood, your blood, the blood. Blood's covering me. The blood of not an animal, but the blood of Jesus Christ. How much more the blood of Jesus? Somebody say the blood. The blood. All right. Somebody say 23 seconds. 23 seconds. Blood, 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 blood. 23 seconds. Say it. 23 seconds. 23 seconds. That's how long it takes for your blood to go through your heart and all the way through your body. 23 seconds. It takes 23 seconds for that blood to be cleansed all the way through your body, back to your heart, and back again. Every 23 seconds, your blood makes a route all the way through your body. Back through your heart, back through your liver, all the way through the cleansing area, and and it's cleansed. If the blood is cleansed every twenty three seconds, every twenty three seconds, Jesus, just think about that. The blood cleansed in your own body every twenty three seconds. That's what God did for us. He's still doing it now. He's still doing it as we're talking right now. You can, you can, you can count 23 seconds and your blood just got cleansed again in your own body. I'm telling you, Jesus made a way for you and me. Let me pray for you. I want to pray this prayer. And I want you to get this. I come tonight in the name of Jesus. He's my resurrected Savior, my Lord. And to mention of his name, every knee shall bow and everyone confess and will do it. Jesus is Lord. We're going to confess that, and you've got to confess that. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, God's plans for my life, God's plans for your life, God's plans for your family, my family, your business. The devil can't touch it. The purpose of Satan cannot touch God's plans for our lives. we got a plan. I pray in Jesus' name that the anointing, stick around the anointing. I want to be around anointed people. I want to hear anointed music. I want to hear anointed preaching. I want to be around anointed men and women of God. Boys and girls of God, I want to be around the anointing of God because the anointing destroys the yoke. And my life and my body, soul, and spirit will function now like God wants it to function. Right now, I pull down strongholds from all across the United States of America and every state that you're operating in now and every nation around the world. Strongholds have got to come down. Every high thing that comes against God, I override and veto it. It cannot stand in the name of Jesus. And the will of God for my family, your family, your business, and our future is in the hands of God. Yeah. I forbid any opposing activities to come against us. It can't come against us. I forbid it in the name of Jesus. Any satanic that's personality that's around us, they've got to leave us. They can't be around us anymore. Any destructive and disruptive assignment that the enemy puts against us, I come against it now. It can't be around anyone. It's watching tonight, and, 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 you, and if you're watching on a replay, if you're watching on Facebook a month from now, it don't matter. I'm praying for you right now, just like we're doing it right now in Jesus' name. I release your name in the atmosphere. Your name is going in the atmosphere, and prayer warriors and intercessors are going to pick it up. 
and they're going to pray for you. And me, just the intercessors are going to do it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. And the Spirit of the Lord is going to give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Right now, I declare you, full gospel, you that are watching, I declare you have the option to function in the name of Jesus. It's coming your way. It's coming your way. I resist the wiles of the devil, and I say divine thoughts are coming in our mind, not evil, by the name of God. We dismantle and nullify and cancel all satanic operations, strategies, and plots to hinder us from yeah. God's plan of our life. My eyes are 2020 on the Spirit of God. My mind is, is listening to the Spirit of God. I'm in tune with the frequency. We have got to get into studying about frequencies. That's how God operates in frequencies. Right now, Zoom, we're on a frequency. That's what we are right now. And God operates in frequency. And I'm telling you, get in tune with the Holy Ghost. Yes. The frequency of God. Now, Father, you've given us great work to do. Full gospel's got a great work to do. You family's got a great work to do. You businessmen got a great work to do. We all got great works to do. So send forth, release the finances for us to do this great work. Release it now in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, devil, you got to spit it up from the north, south, east, and west. The finances are coming to do whatever we shall do in Jesus' yeah. name. I pray this prayer right now in the name of Jesus. Now say, I receive that. Come on, say, I receive it. I receive that. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus name. Hallelujah. Give God some praise, Hallelujah. everybody. Praise Give, God some praise. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. Give God Hallelujah. some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Good praise. to see you, sir. Hallelujah. 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 Thank praise you. God. Praise Thank the you. blood covenant. The blood covenant. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Powerful. Thank you. That was good. Praise God. Yeah, Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. I'm fired up. I won't sleep tonight. I'm fired up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna get this into I've got uh I've, I think I've got about four thousand on my on my account. So I'm gonna send this to all four thousand of them. As soon as we get this posted. I'm going to send it to all my I, partners. Yeah. All my people I need to get there. busy. They'll Don't share near 4,000. They'll share it, and all of them, they'll share it also. So it, it's going to hit around the world. So get ready for it. It's going to hit around the world. Now, listen, Amen. I want some of you leadership to talk to Mario. Mario, every time you say that good presence. Mario. And convince him that we don't need to cancel July yet. That's right. We need to still have that convince. I'm telling you, by then, it's <clears> out of here. That's right. It starts downhill. Yeah. It starts downhill. Passover. Yeah, that's right. Easter. That's the it. The curve goes that's downhill it. at Easter, that's and it, it starts downhill from that point. That's right. We're going to have two months. Declaring it in the name of Jesus. We're going to have two months to get ready for our national convention, our, our worldwide World, convention. World convention. World convention. And, uh, world convention and so just let's put that in our plans and keep it in our plans up to the last second that we have to be. we want to be I agree. We want to be there it's going to change a lot of things you tell yes. you, it's going to change a lot of things amen amen amen, amen. You guys, love you. hallelujah thank you. Thank, you. thank you well god bless you guys and we'll uh this is our first Zoom meeting, and we've got <coughs> good ones coming up, so uh, stay tuned. Thank you. Thank well, you. thank you. Tim, Tim, we've got some additional folks that joined us uh, as we've been on the call here. I see Ter uh, Larry Means there. Uh, yeah. Larry. Yeah. Good, good brother right there. And, and uh, George Segersbowl is over, uh, I think, to my left someplace. Larry, where are you from? Houston, Texas. <laughs> Don't get him started. Have him come speak at your chapter. It'll bless you. <laughs> we love that. <laughs> Hello, Mike. Hi, Larry. Good to see you, man. We had somebody <clears throat> in your hand, but I don't know. Uh... Um, Bill Bacon was here a moment ago. Bill, you still there? Yes, he is. He's on mute. Let me. Uh... Oh, wonderful. 
He lowered his hand. Let's see. Unmute. Okay, you're unmuted. He's Bill. He, yeah, he's on, he's he's on the phone, though. Bill, Bill Bacon. The there he is. Bill Bacon. Say howdy. Okay. Unmute him again. He's back <laughs> unmuted. Yeah, they're unmuted. Bill. There's Vivian. Yeah, he's a. Okay. Try we'll reach out to him for the next director's meeting. That we yeah. got his number. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hey Tim, can I share something from um, that Johnny Kretz said to me uh, yesterday? Please, yes. Or it was maybe it was, no, it was this morning, early this morning. John Corrett, uh, who's been in full gospel forever and uh, worked right alongside of Demas for years, uh, he, uh, he, looked, he found a prophecy from David Wilkerson that was given in 1986. Wow. And, and uh, David just read Did you? Uh, yes, I just read it just a little while ago. Amazing. He, David said, I see a plague coming on the world, and the bars and the churches and the government will shut down. Yeah. The plague will hit New York City and shake it like it's never been shaken. Wow. The plague is going to force prayerless believers into radical prayer and into their Bibles. And Hallelujah. repentance will be deprived from the man of God in the pulpit. And out of it will come a third great awakening that will sweep America and the world. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. 1986. That is the same message that Mike Evans was uh, sharing on uh, a call with him that I, I stepped out for on Tuesday. Uh, he was having a face-to-face -face breakfast meeting with David Wilkerson, and he told him that at that meeting. Oh, I don't know wow. if he, he took out a copy and <laughs> shared it with Mike, but I know that Mike had heard that at that point in 1986, and he still had the notes from that meeting. Mm. Wow. Out of the mouth two or three witnesses. I mean, we're right on the edge of something that's amazing. Right. We're in the middle of it. What a time we are called for such a time as this. Well, Amen. another component of all that, Mike, uh, one of the guys that was an elder to David Wilkerson uh, was also one of the two pastors that helped start Full Gospel in New York City. Hmm. Uh, and that's uh, Dr. Benjamin Crandall, who's now 96. <laughs> and he was close with both Demas and David Wilkerson. And uh, the Crandall family were among those that helped support our New York outreaches in 2016. Uh, financially, they helped back us. Uh, and, and they're serious believers, and God's going to do a great thing to bless them. Yes. Uh, but, but he was the senior pastor for many years at David Wilkerson's church in Times Square. So, see? Seniors pastor. Let me get that one. Let's be in agreement that we're going to see that prophecy come, right, uh, come alive right before our eyes here in the days and weeks to come, right in New York City. Yep. That's going to be, um, Amen. It'll be amazing. And I'm seeing the big revival coming up. It's a big, huge revival. Yes. And we all have to be well prepared. Because when the Holy Spirit started sweeping up, are we prepared to grab the people? Because we have to hold hands with each other, you know? And this is, this, the revelation teaches us about this uh, plague coming in. It is already there. Are we, were we prepared about it? That's the main thing, you know, the, the, are we, as a leader, were we prepared about it? In, in, in Revelation chapter six, it says there about the plague was coming like Moses prepared his people we have to be prepared and I'm I'm telling you this is going to be a huge revival people have started falling down worshiping breaking all the um, uh, idols all across the world they're doing it they, they now found out that this is the only living God that can save them no other can Amen. do it yep yep Amen. hallelujah we, we have blood. to be prepared now. We have to go. This is the time that God is, uh, the Lord is wanting us to go there. The harvest is ready. We have to be there helping them out. That's right. We yeah, heard that, uh, this is the word. This is the word. That's what Moses prepared Aaron before he went. 
and Aaron did what he wanted to do, but we as a church of God, believers, we are all different Pentecostals, brethren, whatever, doesn't matter. God is, we are all in one spirit of God. We have, and I'm so happy that I'm connected with this, um, uh, with the uh, full gospel, you know, that, and, and I can feel the, the vibration that is going out from here. And I'm sure that we are not going to disappoint God in July. That's right. Amen. We heard, Amen. We heard that the underground church in Patricia may have heard this before I did, but we heard that no Chinese Christians from the underground church had gotten sick from the coronavirus. Oh, wow, that's tremendous. Wow. And it was a miracle. But these people are sold out. They are on fire for Jesus, and and we are seeing a lot of little millennials that I have been contacted uh, last week. Um, can we? Can you start a Bible study? There were two or three of my granddaughter's friends that are afraid, and they said we want to know about Jesus, and that they have not been taught in their churches and it's so sad because their churches and i think um tommy has taught about this a lot of churches have gotten lukewarm they're laodicean and uh, the mega pastors we heard today with mike evans they're hooked on porn they're they don't teach about the blood they take the crosses down to make it seeker friendly they're into building bigger and better. And the sheep are crying. They are hurting. They don't know what to do. We need revival. And this is probably what will take it uh, to the next level. Let's plow in to the Lord, sell out 100%, and let her light shine to the people that are fearful. Amen. Let me tell you a story about the underground church. China, Iran, and some of these places around the world about the underground church. Okay, on when they go to worship on Sunday, their worship time, they worship at a different time each week. They may meet at 6 a.m. this Sunday and 12 noon next Sunday and 10 a.m. the next Sunday and 8 p.m. the next Sunday. They move their time so they won't be at the same place at the same time every week. Wow. So they move around. Yeah. They'll meet in a, a, a cave. They'll meet in a building. They'll, they'll meet in a barn. They'll meet different locations at different times each week. Tim, nobody tells them what time or where. That's right. Nobody <laughs> tells them Hallelujah. what time. Are where you know what they do? They go home. They get on their knees. That's right. They ask the Holy Spirit, "Where do I go next week?" He says, "Next week <laughs> we're all meeting at the cave at eight p.m. and they all show up at the cave." Wow! They listen to the Holy Spirit each week, and that's where they go meet, where the Holy Ghost tells them to go meet. Hallelujah. The underground church in Iran is just growing as fast as it can run. The leadership in Iran has got the virus. The military has got the virus. They can't do nothing about it. It's, wipe, it's wiping and cleansing right now as we speak. Right now. No blood. Pray. Yes. No blood. <laughs> no anointing. No anointing. No blood. Just, just adding to you, brother, uh, just adding to you, brother, in, uh, recently in India, they have passed a law about the Christianity. Uh, they are persecuting Christians. So I work with evangelical work in the villages with some village people. We started with one person. Now there are about three, uh, about uh, close to five to eight thousand people are there. And the brothers who go there to preach them, they had met, made a cell group. So they go out, uh, they divide into like 10 people. One starts another cell group. They another cell, cell group. 
so the uh, the officers or the head of the village people and the administration came to know that they have started this self group they started winding the head of the people they took them to the prison but you know what happened recently with this corona virus these head of the people they emerged out they are packing food item they don't have they are poor people very very poor people daily wages but they're taking out money like ten dollars five dollars from their pocket they're buying things and going out and giving to other village people oh, those are poor yeah. and it's so surprisingly that these people are going while they're going they're praying over those people oh, and yeah. there's a head of the village he had uh, he he actually came to beat them with iron rods and everything his father had a coronavirus and he, they took him to the hospital the hospital refused him they brought him back in the house they prayed over him within 3 days every day they used to go 3 days that man old man got up stood up and this man telling who is this jesus is we need to know <laughs> so they are now establishing a full church um, building for the gospel of god to come there Yeah. and i'll be going there in october november i want to witness them because they had gone through real persecution in north of uh, india called haryana and they they are not they are not um, uh, they are not bound down they said brother we are going more forward to take this gospel and you're right brother uh, i know they have been hiding uh, uh, in the house and shutting the doors and they are praying the five six seven people they come together mm. they huddle together and they pray mm. and i'm so happy that you know brother testified it about the cell, um, cave group very good very good thank you lord thank you lord we need to we need to connect you in with uh, our leadership group in trinidad uh for gospel businessman has a strong team in trinidad mm. and uh heavily heavily uh, hindu country as you know it's about 40% uh 20% uh muslim and the rest is some form of christian but for gospel businessmen in trinidad has strong leadership team and uh many of them of indian background and we need to connect you guys at least get you on a zoom call together trinidad and guyana these two are the main island uh, trinidad and guyana guyana is also predominantly hindus right and uh, and also of uh, the christians are growing up yes we have a good uh, for gospel businessman group in guyana too oh praise god what we do young man uh, go getter yes go get him <laughs> wonderful fantastic okay guys all right guys god bless you all hey mother see my mom mom's on hello what? Hi mom. From Birmingham. Me oh. me me Tommy. Tommy Combs is a, she lives in Alabaster, Tommy. All right. Not far. She wanted to, she wanted to come on and uh she'll be able to watch the reruns when we right. get the recording. Uh, that was late getting in. All right. We're going to in the meeting, but God bless you guys and happy Thank Easter. You. Be blessed you. and healed. Stay in touch. Stay. Thank Bye. you Tommy. Bye. Bye. Thank you Tommy. Bye-bye. Bye. Praise the Lord. Bye, Lord.